by the name of Elijah. And when we look at his story, Elijah was a prophet on steroids. He was a prophet that was all about God's business. Prior to this slippery slope that he was on, Elijah declared a drought over the land. A drought came. Uh, Elijah took and multiplied the flour for the widow. He resurrected the widow's son. Elijah called down fire from heaven. Elijah sent a rainstorm. He predicted Ahaz's death. Uh, Elijah killed 400 of Ahaz's men. He even parted the Jordan River. I told you he was a prophet on steroids. He was a prophet. He was a man of God. But when he had put and told Ahaz predicted his death. When Ahaz got home, he talked to Jez. He talked to Jezebel. And he said, honey, Jez, that prophet that's on steroids, he told Jezebel what the prophet said. She put a hit out on Elijah. And when you look at it, she had already had the mark of killing off God's prophet. And you know, when we look at life, one minute you could be up. Next minute, you could be down. The problem is with us. We think that believers supposed to always stay up. No, no. I don't care what uh, uh, Benny Hinn say. I, I don't care what Old Dollar say. I don't care what none of those TV evangelists say. Listen to me. You not going to always be up. The one thing I learned, you're not going to always be down. When we look at life, Let's look at level one. Level one, you got a little trouble. Level two, you got medium trouble. Level three, you got anxiety. Level four, you got depression. Level five, you got back sets and setbacks and upsets and setups. Keep on going. You're going up to the scale and you get to level ten. And you'll get to that level where you just don't want to be here no more. I'm serving notice on you today. Many of us have been at level 10. You just want all of your problems to just go away. And when it seems like it's not going away, you are like Elijah. When you look at verse 4, he said, listen, I don't want to be here no more. That's what he said, brothers and sisters. Verse 4, it said, but he himself went day journey to the wilderness. Came, sat down under the juniper tree. Listen to me. You look, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you're sitting under a juniper tree, you got to get from under it. It represents a, a, a downtrodden. The, the juniper tree. Uh, 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 it represents you trying to run from your trouble. That juniper tree. It represents that giant in your life. You trying to get to a place to where you don't want to deal with nothing. You just want to get checked out of this world. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Listen, verse 4, let us know that Elijah wants to die. 
But are you talking about a prophet, a man of God? He's dealing with trouble. He's faced with trouble. But now trouble has come in his living room where he is living at. Can I get a witness? And now he is all shook up. And he's talking to the Lord. Lord, listen to me. Get me out of here. I want to die. Listen to me. He said, take away my life. Brothers and sisters, listen, I may be on your street. I might be coming down on your avenue. I just want to serve notice on you that don't allow the devil to run around in your head. Don't let him cause you to play Russian roulette with God. If you got faith in God, exercise your faith, knowing that God is going to see you through in the midst of all of your troubles, all of your shakedowns and your shakeup. You got to understand one thing that God is on your side. Turn to your neighbor. Say, God is on your side. God is on your side. Yes. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? So, so, so li listen to me, my brothers and sisters. And, and you know, James, he, he, he tells us when we are dealing with things of this nature, we need to talk to God about it. You, you, you know, the worst thing that I find that we do in the Christian church, we tell them, say, look, oh, child, everything going to be all right. Oh, we know God going to take care. But listen to me. You need to go talk to God about it to see if it's going to be all right. That, that words mean, might be kind of tickling you a little bit. But, oh, if you talk to God, God will give you that real assurance. He will say, listen to me. I don't care what come up against you. I got that. We learned this morning that the battle is not yours. But the devil won't battle you in your mind. He'll battle you in your body. He'll battle you in your house. He'll battle you on your job. But oh, if you talk to God about it, you know what God going to say to you? He going to say the battle is not yours. It is mine. You just need to do what I tell you to do. Yes. Oh, yes, you know, so, 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 so when we look at it, uh, Jezebel represents that evil threat, and you know how it is, you know you're getting threatened by divorce, you're getting threatened by sickness, you're getting uh, threatened by your money not right, you're getting threatened by this world, but let me tell you something, that's all it is, it's nothing but a threat, God got you, you ought to turn to your name. Say, I know the devil is threatening me, but guess what? I know God is bigger than Jezebel. Jazz cannot do me nothing, but God can keep me in perfect peace. Oh, some of you don't have no peace today. I can see it written all over your face. You come here all ugly, frowned up, because you don't have no peace. Oh, you you have that peace, you have a grin from ear to ear. Saying, listen to me, I know I'm in this thing. I know she's after me, but guess what? God going to keep me. So, 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 when you look at it, he, he, he wants to die. And, and, and let me tell you something. You know, let, let me slow down. You know, when you fight life troubles, yeah. listen, you get tired. Yeah. Listen, listen to me. Look, look, me, 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 me and the audience were talking about how tired. I mean, all day yesterday, I just knew it was going to be a long day. I was trying to cut the day short on it by telling the people, look, I can't be here all day. But I didn't finish my day up to 10 o'clock that night. I was tired. I couldn't even study. I was so tired. But imagine when you get tired of a trouble that has been plaguing your life. Guess what? Look, look, look. Elijah had then got his hat and he got out of town because Jezebel put a hit out on him. Listen to me. I don't care who you are, but I know one thing. I know who I am. And guess what, y'all? The devil that put it out on me. But you know what I'm going to tell him? Look, man, girl, don't get your refund because I'm still living. Thank God, all right? You 
you know, you know, the, the, the young people like to listen to Jay Z. You know, I, I like the one with him and Elijah Key when he said New York, you know, concrete city and all of this and that. But oh, oh, Jay Z sound nice. I like a little bit of his stuff. I like to bump it a little bit. But oh, when I can bump Jesus, uh, Jay Z instead of Jay Z, when he can say, "Listen to me, boy, I give you that peace that surpasses it all understanding." Count it all joy when you fall into dire situation. If God be for you, who can be against you? Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's my pavilion. He's my strong top. Oh, you ought to give God some glory in here. I just call all the things that God will do for us. Anybody tired in here? I'm tired of the trouble that I face from day to day. I'm tired of the nightmare. I'm tired of the deep thoughts trying to figure this thing out. Let me have it to get tired in here. But listen here, God gave him rest. He said, look in here, God only give him some rest. Oh, we're going to slow down a little bit. And verse 5, it said, and, and as he uh, lay and slept under a juniper tree, Home, the angel touched him. Oh, you ought to give God some glory. There's something about it. He'll let you lay down. But then he'll come back. He'll tell that messenger, say, look, go touch him. Set him up. Give him something to eat. Give him something to drink. Oh, you know they had a song out there about cooling water from grandmother. Well, no, I don't need that water. But I need the water of life. Anybody know who he is? That's Mary's baby, baby. You didn't no, that's Ezekiel Stone that, that's hewed out of the mountain. Can I get a witness? That, that's Job Osborne in the valley. Oh, you ought to give me something here. That's Solomon Rose of Sharon. That's David Shepherd. Oh, that's Grandmama way out of no way. Oh, he sent the messenger. Say so he'll send you a messenger. He'll set you up and he'll feed you. He'll give you that 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 third that water. That would quench that thirst all along. And the thing about it, he said, uh, uh, and, and, and said it to him, Arise in me. Listen to me. Arise out of your sorrow and start eating the word of God. That's why Sunday school is so imperative. That's why Bible class is so important. That's why consistency and commitment to coming to church is so important. He wants you to eat. He wants you to eat the whole scroll. But you know, we won't eat what we won't eat out of. No, you got to eat the whole menu. Can I get the witness? Guess what he said? If you got faith, come on, you can please me. Even in the midst of your trouble, you still got to have faith. Do anybody in here have faith in God? Do you trust him? Do you know that God will see after you? I don't care how dark the day get. I don't care if you're dealing with midnight at midnight or midnight at midday. God is going to take care of us. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so he, he, he tells him, he, he says, uh, um, he, he, he let him go back to sleep. And y'all listen to me. You know, you're going to have that big trouble. Like my old partner, from Adam McCarthy said, that big trouble. Anybody in here got big trouble? I got big trouble. Oh, come on. You ought to stop fooling yourself. You know there's some big trouble in your life. Some big trouble that has made you to stop in your tracks. That big trouble. You don't know if you should sleep on the sofa, the couch, or the bed, or the floor. Lord, I'll see my outside. That's what we got. Big trouble. Big trouble. So, 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 God said, look, 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 look. let him go back to sleep. But, 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 but listen to me. You know, this is probably a Bible class thing, but they call it theophany, where God appeared. That second angel, they said, the angel of the Lord, he's the one that represents Christ. So he sent Christ back the second time to touch him again. Say, oh, Jesus, touch me, please. Lord, touch me in the midst of my trouble. Lord, touch me in the midst of all of this agony. Lord, touch me. He said here, 
that arise in thee. Mm -hmm. Because the journey is great. Yeah. Listen to me. It's about 200 miles from where he is to get to the mountain. Now, now, now listen, listen. Why God want him to go to the mountain? Mm -hmm. it, it says right here, he said, and he arose mm -hmm. and didn't eat and drink mm -hmm. and went in strength of the feet. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Look, look, look. If you want some strength, mm -hmm. you've got to get that meat of the word. You, you, you know, you know. Stop eating that junk food and get some meat of the word. Stop eating them Skittles and them M and M's and get the meat of the word. You need some meat in your life. That's one thing about meat is protein. It gives you strength. It gives you that, that strength to endure the hardness that you're dealing with. Anybody in here dealing with some hardness in their life? Do you need strength? Oh, oh look, I guess the preacher. All, I'm always by myself. Lord, I need some strength to make this journey that you have given me. Listen to me. And the God didn't say this journey would be easy. So, the mountain, he, he, he tells him to get to the mountain. The mountain is the of God. Oh, you know they say that the, the sheep that is wounded, that the shepherd keep them close to you. God want to get you to the mountain. God want to get you to in his presence. See, if God can get you in his presence, then he can talk to you. Say, God, talk to me. I want to be in your presence. Yes. So, he says here, listen, he got to the mountain and, and then after that, you know, God has strengthened him to get him to the mountain. Some of us need something supernatural to come in and just give us that peace that surpasses all our understanding. You know, some of us, we're looking for this big old miracle. We're looking for this big old thing just to flash out of the sky. But tell you never, see, God doesn't always work like that. You know, God can give me strength. I'll take the strength right now. Just to get me through it. If God allow me in his presence, guess what I know about getting in the yeah. presence of the Lord? The devil can't come there, baby. Can I get a witness? You know, when you call on the name of Jesus, you are in God's presence. Don't you know that the devil got to flee out of your life? He got to get out of your home. He got to get out your children. He got to get out your finances. He got to get out and leave your body alone. When you are in the presence of God, just call on the name Jesus. Can anybody in here say Jesus with me? Come on, say Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. Say Jesus. So, 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 when we look at it, he said, he said, man, why are you here? You know, the thing is, let me tell you something now. People don't want to be honest with God. You, 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 you know, just be honest. God already knew. So you might well just be honest. And then uh, Elijah started having a pity pat party. We ain't talking about pity pat with the cards. You, you know how it is when we used to go to them card parties on Friday. You know how you, my mama used to put them on. Miss Sarah used to put them on. A lot of me, I got so many here put them on. But we ain't talking about that type of pity pat. We talking about a pity pat party. You know when you feeling sorry for yourself, when you become victim of the devil, the, the devil, come on, you ought to give God some glory. Now you say, well, you're wrong for that. No, I'm not. I'm not. Listen, he went down. He asked him, he said, man, what are you doing? Uh, 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 verse 9, it says, he came down unto the king and lies down. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What thou is thou here, Elijah? Yeah, listen. Yeah. Listen, y'all. It's going to come a time in your life. Yeah. Some of you are at that time. And God went, What you doing here? Yeah. And, and then, then you know you've been trying to do God's will. You, you've been trying to stay in between the lines. But Elijah went to tell him, Lord, you know, I've done all this. Yeah. You know, I called fire down. Right. 
Lord, I parted the Jordan River. Elijah even took a, a broken axe handle that, that broke the people's axe. The, the, the head went in the water. He took the, the axe stick and the axe head starts swimming out the water to connect back to the stick. Lord, I'm here. I'm not Elijah. I'm your preacher. I'm the pastor that's here in Cologne. I come up to on him. I went to Christian Bible God. I done this and that. But, 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 but Elijah, why are you here? Pastor White, why are you here? Because I'm feeling sorry for myself. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Give it to God. Yes. 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 You know, you know, don't let the, the devil cause you to be a victim uh, uh, to your mental uh, feebleness, uh, to your mental uh, weakness. Let the devil know that God going to guard my mind. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. That's yes. why I, when I first come here, I say guard your mind because the devil will start running a marathon in your head. Yes. He'll start running a relay around in your head. Then you go to having the pity party. But let me tell you something. Pity party ain't gonna get you nowhere. Amen. That's right. It's just gonna cause you a spirit of heaviness. Yeah. It's gonna cause you to do some things that you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And and then they listen to what he told Elijah. It, it, Elijah was having this pity party. It had him saying, "Look, I don't want to be here no more, Lord." Take me out of this. You know, my son gone home to glory. My mother gone home to glory. Seem like nothing is working right for me. I've been giving you praise and I've been worshiping your holy name. But it just don't seem like it's right. So here, we look for God in all the wrong places. Listen. He said here, he said in verse 9, you would think that God would have been in the wind because he said that it took the east wind to fan the bottom by. But it says here, God is not in the wind. Some of you think that God is in astrology and your zodiac. Yes, you do. Some of you look at it every day. They say if you're born in April, you are in Aries. So some of us are looking for him in all the wrong places. He said here, that he's not in the wind. And then you would have thought he was in the wind because the mountain started to crumble. Ain't God all right? And then he thought he was in the earthquake. So he's looking at him in the earthquake. But I've learned that he's not in the earthquake. Even though he can make the earthquake, but he's not there on this time. Right. Second thing, the third thing, you would think that he was in fire. Uh, he, he, uh, Elijah was the one that called fire down from heaven. But he was not in the fire. But he was in a small still void. Ain't God alright? Every now and then, my brothers and my sisters, I can hear the Lord in a small still void. He's saying, what I know you're troubled, they are great, but just listen uh, to my small still voice. Ain't God all right? Some of you calling your gut feeling or your first man, but I call in my God, a small still boy. He'll come when you're laying down or in your bed. He'll come while you're driving down the road. Ain't going all right. And he'll come. He'll say, Reverend Chong, I know you've been through it all. But if you listen to me, everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Ain't going all right. 
stayed. They nailed him to a cross. That old rugged cross. They took him down. Put him in a grave. A bar tomb. And you know when you bar something, you gotta give it back. And on the third day morning, he gave it back. He said, all power is in my hand. He's all right, he's all right. Hey, all right. I don't know about you, but can you hear him? He's calling, he's calling you. Hey, God, all right. He's saying, Wayne, I know you're troubled. Wayne, I know what's wrong. Wayne, I'm guiding you. Wayne, I'm leading you. Just listen. For the voice of the Lord, you know they got this show out on TV talking about the voice. You got Ed Sheraton, they got CeeLo Green, they got Angela Lara, they out there, they trying to teach and coach. Ain't God all right? They listening to all kind of voices. I don't want you. To listen to Satan, boy. I don't want you to listen to his henchmen, boy. I don't want you to listen to his food to kill, boy. Listen to the voice of Lord. Listen to God, boy. Anybody in here that's listening to what God is saying? Thank <laughs> you.